Hi, let's learn Legendary Marvel Studios' What If, a Marvel deck-building game by Devin Lowe, published by Upper Deck. And although Marvel Studios' What If is compatible with other Legendary games, I will teach it as an independent experience. Every time you play Legendary, the game itself fights back against you with a different Dark Mastermind pursuing a different evil scheme. Only you can stop them by recruiting heroes, fighting villains, and eventually challenging the Mastermind themselves. To set up, place the game mat in the center of the play area. The game comes with four masterminds. The mastermind is the enemy to be defeated in order to win the game. Each mastermind card is double-sided, one with a regular version, and one with an epic version. For our first game, let's choose regular Hank Pym Yellow Jacket. Each mastermind comes with four mastermind tactics. Shuffle those four tactics and place them face down on the Mastermind location. Then set the Hank Pym Yellow Jacket card on his regular side on top of that stack. The game comes with four schemes, of which one will be chosen for this game. For our first game, let's choose Collect an Interstellar Zoo and place that in the Scheme location above the Mastermind location. Next, let's take all the Shield Officer cards and place those in the assigned location under the Mastermind. Take the Wound cards and place those on their designated location on the playmat. The game comes with five special and several standard bystanders. Let's take all the bystander cards, shuffle them together, and place that face down on the designated bystander location. The game comes with eight heroes. For a two to four player game, choose five heroes. And for a five-player game, choose six heroes. For a two, three, and four-player game, let's choose Apocalyptic Black Widow, Gamora, Destroyer of Thanos, Killmonger Spec Ops, Party Thor, and Captain Carter. For a five-player game, add Oatu the Watcher. Then take the hero cards you have chosen, shuffle them together, then place that stack in the designated hero deck location. Next, draw the top card of the deck and place it in the HQ in the locations under the city, so that when you are completed, you have five cards in the HQ. However, if during setup, two or more cards come out that have a cost of seven or more, all players can vote to mulligan those cards. What that means is to take all the cards that cost seven or more that came out and draw more cards to fill the HQ. And if other cards that cost seven or more come out, set those aside as well until all the spaces in the HQ have been filled. Once that has been completed, take those cards that cost seven or more and shuffle them back into the hero pile and set that to create the new draw pile. And it is only possible to do this during setup. You cannot do this during gameplay. Now let's create the Villain Deck. A normal Villain Deck consists of all five Master Strikes, then add the number of Scheme Twist cards required by the Scheme Setup, then add the number of Bystanders listed according to the graph on the back of the rulebook. For a two-player game, two Bystanders. For a three- and four-player game, eight Bystanders. And for a five-player game, 16 Bystanders. Now let's add Villains to our Villain Deck. To start, we can see that each mastermind always leads a group. Hank Pym, however, leads any villain group. The game comes with five regular villain groups and three henchmen groups. Each villain card has a card name, card type, and if it's a villain card, the villain group they belong to, as well as their special abilities, the victory points it's worth at the end of the game, and the attack points you must spend to fight the villain. For a two-player game, choose two villain groups and one henchman group. For our first game, if it's a two-player game, let's choose intergalactic party animals and strange as demons from the regular villain groups, as well as giants of Jotunheim for our henchman group. For a three-player game, add one more villain group, for our first game, let's choose Black Order Guards. For a four-player game, you will have four regular villains and two henchmen villains. So we would add Zombie Avengers for our regular villain and add Ultron Sentries 
for our second henchman villain group. And for five players, add a fifth villain group. In this case, the rival overlords. Next, take the master strikes, scheme twists, bystanders, villains, and henchmen villains, shuffle that all together, and place that in the designated villain deck location. Also, when setting up, be sure to follow the remainder of the setup instructions on the scheme you have chosen. Finally, each player gets eight shield agent hero cards and four shield trooper cards. Then each player takes their trooper and agent cards, shuffles them together, and deals themselves six of those cards. Those six cards will be used as their hand on their turn, the other six will be their draw pile, and in the future, they will also have a discard pile. Players must work together to fight the evil mastermind four times. Each fight takes one of the mastermind's four face down tactic cards. When the mastermind has no more tactics, the players have won the game. Fighting villains and rescuing bystanders along the way earns each player additional victory points. And the player with the most victory points is the most legendary hero of all. The mastermind works to accomplish an evil scheme throughout the game. Each scheme card has an evil wins condition, which tells you how the mastermind completes their scheme. If the evil scheme is completed, then the mastermind wins the game for evil and all the players lose. If this happens, then the victory points don't matter and no player wins. Choose a random player to go first, and each player will take their turn in clockwise order. On your turn, do three things. Play the top card of the villain deck, play cards from your hand using them to fight and recruit, then discard your hand and draw six more cards. At the start of each player's turn, reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it is a villain, check to see if it has an ambush effect. If it does, resolve that text immediately. Once completed, or if the card does not have an ambush effect, set it in the space closest to the villain deck. The exception to this being, in a four and five player game, there is a warm-up round where, on each player's first turn, they do not play a card from the villain deck. But on every turn after that, they play as normal. Ambush is an effect that happens when the card is drawn from the villain deck. Fight is an effect that happens when you spend attack points to defeat the villain. Escape is an effect that happens when a villain is pushed out of the city. If next time the top card is drawn, and it is also a villain, that first villain gets slid over one space to the left to make room for the new villain. If you draw a villain card, and there is a gap between villains, only move what is necessary to fill the gap to make space for the new villain. If you flip over the top card of the villain deck, and it's a villain, but all spaces in the city are filled, a villain escapes. To do that, place it in the escape section designated for them, move all the cards over, and place the new villain in the sewers. When a villain escapes, they KO one card from the HQ that costs six or less. To do that, choose one card from the HQ and put it in the KO section. Then immediately refill that new space. If a villain escapes, but he has a bystander with him, you would still KO one of the cards from the HQ that costs six or less, refill that space, and discard one of the cards from your hand for the bystander. And note that it doesn't matter how many bystanders were carried off by the villain, each player only ever discards one card for escaping bystanders. And finally, if an escaping villain has an escape effect, resolve that effect before moving on. Escape effects are resolved before ambush effects. If the top card of the villain deck is a bystander, it goes under the villain closest to the villain deck, no matter where in the city that villain may be. However, if there are no villains in the city, then the bystander goes with the mastermind. And the next time the mastermind gets defeated, that player would gain that bystander. When it's time for a villain with a bystander to move, the bystander moves with that villain. 
If the top card of the villain deck is a Master Strike, the Mastermind strikes and you resolve any text under each Mastermind's Master Strike. Then, unless otherwise noted, place the Master Strike in the Strike KO pile. When playing against Ultron as the Mastermind, it is important to keep track of the Master Strikes. When the fifth Master Strike is drawn, it gives Ultron infinite attack points. And then there's only a few cards that have a hope of defeating Ultron. If the top card of the villain deck is a Scheme Twist, resolve the Twist condition listed under the Scheme. Then, unless otherwise instructed, put the Scheme Twist in the Twist KO pile. Cards in the KO piles do not get reused during gameplay. And note that cards that are not villain cards do not push up any villains in the city. Once the top card of the villain deck has been revealed and resolved where applicable, we use the hero cards from our hand to attack and recruit. Each card has a heroic team, heroic class, card name, hero name, attack and or recruit point amounts, the card cost, and any keywords and special abilities the card may have. The Marvel Studios What If Core set comes with two hero teams, Guardians of the Multiverse and Shield, as well as six hero types, Black Tech Heroes, Blue Ranged Heroes, Red Covert Heroes, Yellow Instinct Heroes, Green Strength Heroes, and Gray Basic Heroes. And cards that have two hero classes count as both of those classes. Cards with a number plus have a base of that number plus the potential for more. Numbers with an asterisk let you know that the card's special ability has something important to do with that number. When it's time for you to play cards, you may play them from your hand in any order, which may matter in the future. You get the amount of recruit points listed on recruit cards and the amount of attack points listed on attack cards. So in this case, we have one, two, three attack points, which is enough to remove this Giants of Jotunheim card to be placed in your personal victory pile. When fighting a villain, if it has a fight effect on the card, resolve that effect before adding the card to your victory pile. Also, if it has a bystander and the bystander has a special effect, resolve that effect as well before adding it to your victory pile. And you can do the fight and rescue effects in any order. If you have enough attack points to attack more than one villain, you may resolve any fight effects it may have, then continue on to the next villain and resolve its fight effects before adding it to your victory pile. When you have enough attack points to attack the mastermind, you may do so. To attack a mastermind, take the top mastermind tactic card and resolve its effects. Then place that in your victory pile. And the mastermind now needs to be hit one fewer times. And if you have enough attack points to attack a mastermind a second time, you may do so. Some villains have an effect that make it a new mastermind, meaning there will be more than one mastermind to defeat this game. And all masterminds must be defeated in order to win the game. Whenever a Master Strike card is drawn, each mastermind must do its Master Strike effect. And the current player chooses in which order the masterminds strike. For effects that say it affects the mastermind, you pick which mastermind it will affect. And a regular villain that has ascended to become a mastermind does not have any mastermind tactics. So when it is defeated once, it is added to that player's victory pile as a regular villain. And now, moving on to recruit points, they are used to recruit shield officers or any other hero in the HQ. To recruit a card, you spend up to the amount of recruit points you have to take a card and add it to your personal discard pile. If you have enough recruit points to recruit more than one hero, you may. First, take your first choice from the HQ and fill in that gap. Then, take your second choice from the HQ, fill in that gap, and so forth. When your turn is complete, take the cards you had played that turn and put them into your discard pile. And draw six more cards. 
But if there are no more cards to draw, take your discard pile, shuffle it together, and deal yourself back up to six cards. And that is how cards you recruit get added to your hand. And all the cards you drew this turn get discarded whether you played them or not. Some heroes have effects that are unrestricted, and some cards require a card to have been played before accessing its superhero ability. When a card simply has text, there is no restriction on your ability to resolve the text. However, some cards require you to have played a certain type of card before you are able to access its superhero ability. In the case of this Killmonger Special Ops card, if this was the first card you played, you would get the three attack points, but you would be unable to perform the superhero ability as well. In this case, a green strength hero would have needed to be played in order to access the superhero green strength ability. And a card's superhero ability can only be used once on your current turn. Cards with two symbols are both requirements. And playing a superhero ability is optional. Some cards will say to draw a card. What that means is to take a card from your personal draw pile and add it to your hand. Reveal just means show that you have it. So reveal from your hand, reveal the top card of your deck, and reveal from your victory pile. Some cards instruct you to KO a card. What that means is to take the card instructed and place it in a KO pile. When a hero gets KO'd, you still get to use its recruit, attack, and special abilities this turn. When a card has an effect that references all your heroes, it is not just referring to the cards that have been played, but also the remainder of your cards that have yet to be played this turn. Some cards will say a villain captures a bystander. What this means is to take a bystander from the bystander pile and add it to a villain. When a card instructs you to rescue a bystander, it is telling you to take that card from the bystander deck and place it in your victory pile. Sometimes you will be instructed to gain a wound. What this means is to take a wound from the wound stack and place it in your personal discard pile. Wound cards themselves have no effect beyond weakening your hand. Wound cards are not hero cards, so when a card effects that affects heroes do not affect wounds. There are different card effects that could be used to remove a wound card from your hand, or alternatively, it is possible to remove a wound card from your hand by not recruiting or attacking. You can still do the other effects of the card you may have in your hand, but as long as you do not recruit or attack, you can remove wound cards from your hand. If you were to ever run out of officer, wound, or bystander cards, you simply do not take a card and continue playing. Some hero and villain cards have keywords, so let's go through those right now. The what if keyword means choose a hero class or hero name and then draw the top card of your draw pile. And if it matches that class or name, you get to do the what if effect. But note that the effect is not allowed to trigger on a starting zero cost card. So you are unable to choose that as your what if option. Once the card has been revealed, you may either place it back or discard that revealed card. Now let's say you were playing with other legendary sets. Let's say the name you chose was Black Widow. The what if effect of course would trigger if the card revealed was Black Widow and the effect would be triggered if the card revealed was Apocalyptic Black Widow. But you would have to be clear about which specific character you meant. You could not, for example, say Captain and hope that one of the Captain America or Captain Carter cards was the card to be drawn. You would have to say Captain America or Captain Carter. Another keyword is Soulbind. What Soulbind means is to take the top face-up card of your villain pile, flip it, and place it at the bottom of your victory pile. Then you may do the effect. 
During gameplay, a villain card that is face down is considered to not be a part of your victory pile, and it is only at game's end that you would then flip it over to count the victory points. And a soulbind effect is usually optional unless otherwise stated. Next we have the liberate keyword. And liberate means you get the number of attack points stated to use against villains that have bystanders or the mastermind, whether he has a bystander or not. Next we have the empowered keyword. And empowered means you get plus one attack point per condition listed on the card. However, some cards do not specify where they are being empowered from. Those cards are being empowered by cards in the HQ. Ultron Infinity has all the empowered abilities of all Ultron sentries in the city, the escape pile, and stacked next to him. And each one is counted separately. So if there are two powered by instinct abilities, he gets plus two attack points. Next is Cross-Dimensional Party Rampage. What this means is to reveal any party card from your hand or victory pile. Any player that is unable to do one of these gains a wound. Cross-Dimensional Zombie Rampage works the same way in that you can reveal any card that has demon or zombie as a part of its name to avoid gaining a wound. And Ultron has cross-dimensional Ultron Rampage. And it is possible for a player to not reveal a card that has one of the keywords to avoid gaining a wound in order to gain a wound. Rise of the Living Dead means each player, starting with the current player and going clockwise, checks the top card of their victory pile to see if it has a Rise of the Living Dead keywords on it. If it does, that villain re-enters the city. And the usual rules of a villain entering a city this way must still be followed. So any escape effects happen for any villains that may escape. Any ambush effects for any villain must still be resolved except for Rise of the Living Dead. Once a Rise of the Living Dead is in effect, it is only in effect once that round. It does not cause a chain reaction of every card ultimately entering the city. Mastermind tactics, however, are not affected by Rise of the Living Dead. Killmonger's superhero ability says you get plus one attack for each different villain group in your victory pile. When counting those groups, we can see in this example we have four different groups. The Black Order Guards, the Intergalactic Party Animals, and each henchman villain is its own villain group, so the Giants of Jotunheim and Ultron Sentries count as their own group as well, for a total of four. If Party Skrull escapes with a hero, do not discard a card from your hand. Cards that affect villains do not affect masterminds. Players lose if the evil wins condition is met on the scheme. Players win when the mastermind has no more mastermind tactics. If you won the game, count up the victory points to determine who is the most legendary hero of them all. If either the hero or villain deck reaches zero cards, finish that round, and if the mastermind is not defeated, it is considered a tie. However, the player with the most victory points wins the individual victory. The game also comes with different difficulty options, which I will leave to you to discover. Thank you for joining me to learn Legendary Marvel Studios What If, a Marvel deck building game. Have fun, and I invite you to join me next time as I do a playthrough.